Hello and welcome to my tutorial about the 5 second project that I did for Grayscale Gorilla. This site, this contest and this movie. In this tutorial I will show you how to get to the different morphs and how to render out a wireframe using the Toon Shader really quickly. Alright, here's my scene file and I've got to tell you the first morph is really a big giant fake. So, how do I get from a pyramid to a cube? And what I did is I've created a morph target for the pyramid and I've got two poses. The first pose uses the four points you can see right here. You see, I'm just scanning this up and in my view I'm getting the front side of my cube and with the other morph target I just erased these edges. Just getting this and getting the edges behind this face. And you see this isn't quite a cube but from this angle it looks like a cube and that's all I need. Alright and then when I've got this animation I just replaced this crazy morph target with my actual cube which is here. You can see from this to this. And my tip for morphing is always look to uh, look at states where you can exchange objects. I'm doing this all the time in this clip and so let's go on to the next objects. Alright. Then the cube gets turned and just scaled down. This is just as easy as it, as it looks. Just added another morph target and scaled the two points down. Then right here I'm exchanging objects again. This plane, the flat cube, gets replaced by two cylinders. This one and this one. And I animated the slice function to 180. And then I get this animation. I also did the same thing for the cylinder you see right here. Just a cylinder animated the slice function. And for the last steps I just used all the functions of the cylinder primitive object. When you are adding a fillet to your cylinder you automatically get a capsule if you just make the capsule large enough. And after that I just scaled down the height. You can see it right here, object, height. I just scaled the height down and now I've got a sphere. And after that, I just moved the sphere backwards and when it is far enough away, I replaced it with a cool teapot object I've got from Exponsa. Just to show it to you, Exponsa. Xponsor.com. You can watch their showreel or you just can go to software and here they've got a teapot plugin for release 11. I really love this plugin especially because they've got the 75 gig option and uh, you can have an original teapot from 1975 and do radiosity tests like the big ones. I hope they will also bring this plugin to release 12. I really love it. Alright, now I will just want to show you how to do good morphets, not faking them. Therefore, I've prepared this scene. Um, I've got a cube, and the cube got a morph target, and the cube morphs to a sphere. The important thing when you're morphing is that your objects have the same polygon count and the same point count. So I'm just rebuilding this this morph setup right here with you. So for this I will just duplicate this cube, delete the morph tag and also hide my old cube. Oops. So we've got this cube and this sphere and when you go to view, no to objects object information, you will see how many points this object has and how many polygons. 
and the sphere which I want to morph to has the same point point count and the same polygon count. So that's why this morph will work. You have to fake it on complex objects or you have to model the next morph target out of your primitive or whatever you have. Alright, all you got to do is add a character tag, post morph, and in this morph target I'll choose points, delete the, the standard morph target, and now I can just drag and drop my sphere in here. Then he asks me if this should be an absolute or relative morph. I'll just choose relative. And then you can see it just worked. Now I can easily morph between the cube and the sphere. If you would like to go from this cube to a pyramid, you would have to add a new pose and just do something like this, scale first point almost zero and do this for all the points and you will get a really inaccurate result. Just demonstrate this to you. This is what you will have to do if you don't want to fake anything. So, all right, we have got a rocket instead of a pyramid. Um, but you can now morph between the pyramid and the cube. But the better way is to, to create another cube which has less segments. This cube has, uh, this cube has five segments and this makes it hard to, to model a pyramid. On the new cube, I'll just add a new character tag, uh, post morph, points, and on this pose, I will just select these points. So on this object, you will just have to scale these points together and you will get a pyramid. So then just uh, reduce the pong angle to 10 and you will have a nice morph from a cube to a pyramid. So now I've just prepared a short animation for you to show you how you can get uh, get these easy morph targets. We will just morph to our cube and then morph to the pyramid. So on our cube object we've got the morph tag. The, the sphere morph target is set to 100%. So we will just morph from our sphere back to our cube. This is what happens here. Then we will stay with this cube for a while and then skip to the other cube which has only a few points and this cube morphs to a pyramid. So at this point I've just set the visible in editor and visible in render mode from on to off and then this cube from off to on. So now we've solved the, the problem of creating an, an easy morph target for a pyramid but what if we want to render out the mesh like I did in my movie? We will have a problem because here we have five segments and then we only have one segment. Um, the, the solution I came up was I'll just um, bake this animation. I'll take every state of this object and, and turn it into a separate object. You can do this by just duplicating it right click and current state to object. On this object we can choose functions functions, and subdivide, hit subdivide right here and if this frame it works but the other frames are going to screw up. That's why I had to duplicate this object many times and just choose functions, subdivide and so after a while it works. Alright, back to my project. Here you can see how this works out. Alright, before I'll show you how I got this method to work in my project, I'll just show you how you can set up a mesh render with the toon shader really quickly. So I'll just go to my render settings, uh, go to effect and add sketch and tune. 
and on Sketch and Tune, and just in enable it, I just selected edges and right here you can see the Tune Shader follows all my edges on my object and on the render I just gave it a, the best line anti-aliasing so I can get really smooth and thin lines. And on the shading somewhere you can adjust the, the line thickness maybe in the in the shader itself strokes, curve stroke, color, thickness. Right here you can adjust the, th the thickness of your lines and you can see now I've got a really big cross. Alright, but now um, I'm just seeing my object. My idea was to render out the mesh as a separate pass and mu multiply it in my compositing program. So, the easiest method was to put all my objects into another null, give it a render tag, and set this render tag to matte object and set the color to white. So now I've got perfect white objects, which I can easily set to multiply in my compositing program. So in this version of my project, you can see I've only got, got very few lines because my objects have, have only a few segments and my my cube right here also has only one segment for each face but I on, on the other objects I wanted to have this this cool wireframe look so I had to subdivide these objects afterwards and now we we will come to the method that I showed you before um, I'll just select the later version of my project you can see that that this object is subdivided the right way and this too. Alright, and you can see right here I've got a really long object list and these are the separate steps I had to take. You can see here's the key for every step to to get the wireframe looking right. On this frame this object is visible and on the next frame this object only is visible. I'm just switching between these objects. Then comes this one, next frame, this one, and so on. So I'm turning on and off the objects to to get this look. And I've also introduced a scale cube, who gets who gives me uh, the right subdivision on the actually actual face of the pyramid. So this cube just gets scaled up, and from this cube. I can change to this cube, which also is subdivided. I just did the animation again because it's a simple scale animation and scale this cube down. So that's all folks. Happy morphing!